Hi everyone. Hi everyone, welcome to the... Uh... Hi everyone, welcome to the Emporium Outdoors. My name's Michael and today we have Esme and Simon who's just behind the camera. So the weather is just around freezing, it's very mild for this time of year, so we're just into the early part of December. But I do have the jackets on the dogs. Come on Simon. Come on. Simon needs a haircut, so he's looking a bit scruffy. But it's a little bit longer, keep him warm. So today's video is going to be an overnight camp. Just the one night, unfortunately, tonight. What's up, Bez? Uh, but it's something that we're all looking forward to. Three musketeers are tired out from work and being stuck in. So it's pretty late in the day, it's around noon. So I want to get set up pretty quickly. Um, Simon's an older dog. And actually one of the reasons why I bought a machine with a heated cab is so that I could bring him along in winter without him suffering. So I'd like to let him run around and have his fun. But I want to make sure that he stays warm as well. So I want to get the, uh, the setup ready. So today we're running with the Teton setup. We've got the Vista One tent and it's going to be marvellous. Got the big sleeping bag from Teton as well. So that'll keep all three of us nice and warm. We're going to have an open fire at the front. Do a little bit of cooking later on. So if that sounds like fun and you'd like to come along with us, you're more than welcome. You ready guys? Come on, come on Simon. Up, up. Up, up, up. Good girl. Come on Simon. Good boy. You ready? Never pass up the opportunity to pick up some birch bark along the way. It's great from these dead trees too. It's easy to get and it's not going to harm the tree because it's dead. So this one I've been harvesting for actually a couple of years. Every time I go by if I'm short I'll just grab some. Oh, I think my dogs have taken off. Come on! Where are you going? Come on, Simon. Where are you headed? Okay, down the trail.
Ooh, damn. So we've arrived at our little camp spot. It's one of my favorite places. It's the, the valley one. Uh, but I think this is going to be great just for the three of us. I can keep an eye on Simon. He doesn't like to go down the hills, so hopefully he'll stay around camp. And I've also got a wood stash, so makes my life very easy. But I probably will add to it as well. Pretty overcast day, but I think it's still going to be great. Okay, I'm going to turn the machine around so I've got access to the box at the back. And I think we're just going to get set up right away. Mm, just the smell of the air. This is it. Fire here. Yeah. So I think that'll work perfectly. We've probably got about two hours worth of daylight. So I think I'll quickly get the tent set up. Not expecting snow, and it's probably going to go down to maybe minus four, minus five, so it's going to be actually pretty warm. Um, considering taking the jacket off Esme, wherever she is, because <clears throat> she does get too hot. Beautiful. All I can hear is the ticking of the exhaust cooling down. They just look so happy. Go get Simon. Simon, don't go down there. Simon. Come on. Come on, Simon. Good boy. The world's tiniest polar bear.
You having fun? That's me. Feels great to be all set up. Not that it takes long with the Teton. I'm not sure I'm going to put the cover on tonight. It would be nice if the clouds clear later on. Be able to just kind of stare up. That would be fantastic. I think I might do that. If it does start to snow or do anything weird, it's like four clips. So that works for me. So Simon's making himself at home. Set my chair, I think, and start thinking about getting some firewood together. Ah, time. Quarter to two. So I'm going to do that very slowly now. You guys coming? Oh, 
So I'm going to keep the rest of the wood in the round, so I'm just going to split a couple of logs. I actually brought two of my axes along today. Uh, just as a kind of a thought, I've been watching a lot of axe videos recently. And uh, obviously own these two axes. This is a Halterford small splitting axe. And this is the Wetterlings Bushman's axe. Um, and this one's no longer available. You can see the pretty similar size. You finished. So as you can see, they're very similar size, uh, but the heads are very, very different. This one is obviously curved. This one is flat. If you look straight on, you should see this one has this ray center section that acts as a split as a wedge whereas this is kind of a mix it's more of a cutting hybrid type of head I wouldn't say it's a traditional axe head because it's too narrow um, but it's it's a general purpose axe um, one that is sized so you can use your hand for fine work or a longer handle to use with two hands so that's the two axes I brought along today I thought I'd just uh, split some stuff up. That's a tough one. That's pretty wet. It is kind of split, so this isn't a fair test, but... Stand that one up. Yeah, maybe this is the better axe for splitting. So we just took a quick look at these axes, not really a comparison, but I'd forgotten because I hadn't used either one of them side by side for a long time. This is a heavier head, it's got a much better split in action than uh, the Wetterlings. But this is kind of a one-trick pony, whereas I can split with this, I can also carve a little bit, I can cut things, it's just a much better chopper. You want to cut through wood as well as split it. It's pretty good and I like the axe length. I would like a small hatchet but uh, it's not something I would want to carry two axes unless I had two or I was demonstration so yeah I've owned this axe now for maybe three or four years I think got to know it quite well and uh, I really like it 
Um, it's been a very good axe. It's done everything I've asked of it, even though I'm not a big axe fan. Especially in this environment, I would take a saw over an axe any day. Uh, but this has just been great for either pounding things in to the ground, chopping things, splitting wood. It's perfect for that type. It's a good solid all-rounder. I think if I didn't know what I wanted to do with an axe, I didn't have a specific purpose, um, this is the axe I would probably purchase or something very similar to this because it is such a good general purpose axe. It's got a light head, long handle, so you can really whip it to get speed, to split stuff. And it's not tiring to use. I find the profile on the axe handle is very good. And it's very easy to uh, sharpen. So it ticks a lot of boxes for me. That's my little custom cover that I made. Okay, so I'm going to start this fire in a second. Any minute.
So the fire is going great. We can just let that build up some bed of coals. Um, but I'd just like to say thank you to a, a subscriber. Um, it was a gentleman from the UK called Mark. And he emailed me directly a few weeks ago. And uh, we got chatting back and forth. And he uh, offered to send me a gift. Um, typically that's not something I would do. I've never accepted any gifts before. And it, it just a circumstance that I've gone into detail made it where I felt that maybe this is something I should have should do. So Mark sent me out a gift from the UK and uh, I have it with me. So this is a little stove set, uh, roasting set, fire set. I think there is a name for it and I'll put it around. Uh, but this is a really good set. So this is actually something I've been wanting to order from the UK for some time. So I, I don't know whether you're monitoring my emails and thoughts, Mark, but uh, this is perfect. Uh, it's by TGM Metalworks in the United Kingdom, and it's kind of handmade um, stove holder. So let me just show you the simpler. So it allows me to swing uh, pots or the grill across the fire, like so. Uh, so I can change the height, lock them off, like so. And it's gonna help me with all my cooking. So th this is fantastic. I, I This is something I would have bought myself. It was very thoughtful and, you know, it's, it's perfect for me, Mark. So I really appreciate it and uh, Thank you for being a subscriber and thank you for the gift. And I also got a small Canadian pin as well, which is in my civilian jacket, not my outdoor stuff, because I'd like to, to wear it out. So I think it's a fantastic. So I wish you all the best, Mark, and uh, thank you very much. I shall be testing this with a steak later on. So <laughs> thanks again. See how that goes.
Come on, Simon. Come on. Simon, you hungry? Come on. Good boy. Come on, you can make it. That is just perfect. I picked up a lot of flavor from the smoke from earlier. It's just Amazing. A bit of a small bone has me. You got it? Come on, Simon. Good boy. That was beautiful. Got to admit, that was pretty darn good. What do you guys think? Is that good? That's all I got. Sorry. Okay, we're going to get tidied up, get ready for the sun going down, which is going to be very shortly. So just swing the kettle over. We'll have some hot water and maybe a cup of tea before bed. Or even hot chocolate. Do you want chocolate? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go get packed up for now. So it's about nine o'clock and it's time for us to hit the old sleeping bag. I'd like to get up quite early tomorrow um, before the sun comes up so we can do a bit more exploring. So Esme's going to sleep in the bottom of the sleeping bag like she normally does. There's a zip at the bottom that she can stick her face out of and she's very comfortable there and she keeps my feet warm. And Simon will sleep at the top with me and lots of room in the sleeping bag and I also have the Helicon Tex um, Roman poncho thing with me as well. So if we do get cold, but it's very unlikely. We've still got the fire going in front of us. And we'll keep an eye on the stars and they start to come out. I'll try and take some pictures. So, until the morning, 
All three of us wish you good night. So good morning everyone. We slept really well last night. Uh, very comfortable. Simon slept right here. Esme slept over in the foot box. She's now up on top. Uh, it's around 7.30 but it's still dark out. So I'm going to get up and get the fire going. Get the kettle on for a nice cup of coffee and then some breakfast. And then we can start today's activities. Should be good. It's very nice when it's crisp outside and you're in a nice warm sleeping bag. That's for sure. So we've got the fire going. We've got the kettle over the stove the fire anchors which is really useful um, I didn't really bring anything to cook for breakfast I've just got some um, breakfast bars basically so no eggs no bacon unfortunately but I'm sure Esme and Simon would have liked some bacon so the plan this morning is to uh, do a quick pack up have my coffee first sorry quick pack up and then we're going to go exploring, see if we can get a grouse, maybe to take home. And then head home probably about lunchtime. But it was a very, very nice night actually. Very comfortable in the, the Vista one. And uh, plenty of room for the three of us. I think Simon had a pretty good time. He was just out, like a, out for the count. They're both looking at me like they need feeding, so I should probably have to go and do that next. Cheers. This is the Black Rifle Coffee. Oh. It's nice on the hands too. Simon's just building his bed. What are you doing, Lizzie? Just hiding behind me. So I don't think it'll take us long to pack up. I started the machine already this morning just to make sure everything's good. Let it run for five, ten minutes just to warm up. For other now the machine's gonna start. Uh, Why well, I've still got all my camping stuff out because then I could just jump back into bed and plan uh, rather than pack everything up and then click. And it's like ah okay now I have to find a place to keep the dogs warm etc. Best on SP. So next thing I'm going to start packing up, um, I'm going to start the machine up and get the cab warm for the dogs, or for Simon, and he can keep nice and warm while I pack everything up. That shouldn't take long at all.
So as you can see, everything's packed up now. Dogs are in the truck getting warm. Just turn the machine off. Um, all I've got to do now is take care of the fire. And we're done. I did that in pretty slow time, so I wasn't in a rush, just methodically. Uh, you probably noticed I didn't roll my uh, sleeping mat up correctly. I don't bother doing that until I get home because it's got lots of moisture all over it. Um, I normally dry them out, then roll them to store them. So I don't get too uh, too wound up about getting things back in the bags. Same with the tent, I just wrapped that up. Actually, I don't know where the bag is for that one. So time's just gone nine o'clock, so we're gonna head down the trail now, and uh, hopefully we'll come across a grouse or two. I think we'll hunt for a little while, a couple of hours, and then, uh, then we'll start heading for home. Yeah, got everything. Got a habit of leaving things behind. I think that is everything. Well, I've been driving around for just over 90 minutes and uh, no sign of grouse. So we'll keep looking on our way back, but I think it's time to probably start heading back. Uh, we just pulled into one of our old campsites just to check it out. So it would be a good spot in the future. Uh, this is okay, this spot. I've camped here a couple of times uh, recently, actually, but it's just not good wood source. kind of a mixed area um, but might be uh, worth bringing some wood in stacking it for a future date so anyway we're going to keep heading on our way um, I think that's probably the end of the video for now so until next time take care And as always, thank you very much for watching. If you like my videos, leave me a comment, maybe a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe.